Fuck Just them. relinquish your women <laughs> to the handsome black guys. <laughs> Oh, yeah, we are back. It's Pot of Thunder, the recognized symbol of excellence in KISS podcasting. It's your buddy, Andy. It's your buddy, Nick. And guess who is back from KISS Cruise number six? Brown Smoke the Pirate. (laughs) (laughs) It's him, your buddy, Chris. He's back. He's got a suntan, a little bit of a red nose that I could see from over here. Got a lot of color. Catching some rays down there. The the last day really took it over the top. Yeah. It was windy as fuck up on that uh, pool deck, but the sun was out unobstructed, so uh, pretty good. That'll get you. Happy with my complexion after that. Yeah. Well, I don't know where to begin. I mean, there's so much to say. Do you want to give us a day-by-day, blow-by-blow? Is there anything you want to start with right off the top? Uh, Why don't we start off the top by saying that we're not going to do a song on this show, although people have figured it out by now. <laughs> yeah. Based on the title. But, what uh, the hell are you doing? This would be one of those podcast extending episodes, so this thing will stumble on for an extra week than it would was originally planned. <laughs> Well, Andy and I were were assured by Chris that there's so much to talk about from the cruise. There's a ton. I honestly don't know very much about it. I was trying to keep up on social media, YouTube, and all that stuff. Got a gist of what was happening, but uh, I'm oblivious to what the well, experience was. But so you said you for. crept around and got some set lists, I right? did. Yeah. People were posting that as it was happening. We, a couple of uh, people that I'm friends with on Facebook that were on the cruise that are listeners. They were posting set That's lists. nice for daddy. So, yeah. I was trying to keep abreast of now, the Now, did they post the uh, unmasked set list as well? or I don't believe. That? Not that I saw, I don't think. So you're hip to what the cool gems were during the masked show. Yes. Andy? Are you no going? idea. Lay it out for me. All right. Well, yeah, that's a good place to start as any. The... Uh, sort of uh, premier evening of entertainment on the ship where the two creatures of the night makeup shows okay. was at the first one um, notable uh, attendee within eyesight was Shannon Tweed was up uh, our seats were in the upper balcony in the middle then over to the right there's like a little overhang uh balcony style and she was right there at the corner came rolling in all right Hammond! came rolling in throwing guitar picks out to people and uh <laughs> having a good time that's good she was throwing guitar picks yeah from the balcony okay yeah so why not uh, huh yeah does she have shannon tweed guitar picks I don't know. You don't know. I you didn't catch one. It'd okay. be a collector's item right there. Yeah. So anyway, like the Nick Menza guitar pick that Nick <laughs> yes, has. There you go. <laughs> Which is a strange item, but it's real. Why not? Get them made. Throw them out. Anyway, go ahead. So obviously they opened with uh, "Creatures in the Night." Second song was "Keep Me Coming." Wow. Which I had. Uh, done a little research on hadn't done that one since like the very beginning of the the original creatures tour they did it like the first couple of shows and then they scrapped and then it. they scrapped it right away i wonder yeah. why it's unbelievable yeah i wonder why maybe it just didn't work live back then did it work well one thing paul days ago? uh paul spoke about a little at the q a on the pool deck on the last night there was about all the uh empty arenas they played to on the creatures tour so maybe they were started panicking early yeah. and like we got to throw some get the old known in tunes yeah. in here but yeah. um so that was good it sounded great and um then they played a couple of solo album cuts really they did radioactive wow 
which uh, gave me a new appreciation for the song. And then Dude, because uh, you didn't have to hear the two minute intro <laughs> that you hated when we yeah, listened that, to that, that song, killed the song for me. <laughs> it, it ruined it for me. <laughs> and then they did. Uh, Wouldn't you like to know me? Wow, that's pretty awesome. Yeah, it was good. Then from kind of from, from that point on, it became your standard Kiss fair. So thing. they knocked all the rare stuff out pretty much right up front, and then went to the classics. Yeah, mm-hmm. I would say I'm, I'm trying to. Th- I think that was pretty much it for the uh, for the uh, real rarities during the mask show, and it was all front loaded. And then they just kind of trotted out all the uh, uh, standard hits. So, uh-huh. so here's an interesting uh, encounter that happened during that show. <laughs> um, <laughs> So we're always sorry. Go ahead. Perfect timing, or imperfect timing, if you will. Uh, my wife got hit with this uh, case of motion sickness oh no. right at the beginning of the show, um, and had to uh, exit to go to the bathroom, and um, it was uh, an emergency situation. And the closest bathroom was the men's room. Okay. Mm, yeah. So she went in there to uh, puke or whatnot. Yeah. And when she was done on her way out, someone entered. Okay. Any, this is interesting. Any guesses on who it might be? I'm going to go with the obvious, but I don't know. I wonder if we're on the same page here. Probably. The bathroom made you think of it? <laughs> I'm thinking Mendo- Marco Mendoza is the person I'm thinking. Okay, I have a different thought. Okay. I was going to say Doc McGee. Oh. You are correct. There you go. Doc, Mc- if you go to a Kiss concert, go <laughs> hang out by the bathroom. You'll find Doc McGee. <laughs> yeah, that he, you are totally right. Yep. He came in, and this is all according to my wife. She said he was initially, of course, confused and shocked and thought he might have been entering the, <laughs> the ladies' room yeah. unintentionally. But then... Uh, um, and my wife didn't know who he was, and she yeah. did, he, she's... He said, uh, oh, am I in the wrong bathroom? And she goes, no, you're okay. I just had to get sick and I had to rush in here. And she said, uh, figures, my first ever kiss show and I have to get sick at the beginning of it. And he's like, extends his hand to her and he goes, well, I'm I'm Doc McGee, manager of the band. <laughs> and then he said, uh, my advice to you is to start drinking some alcohol. <laughs> it'll, it'll fix your I- equilibrium and... Wow. When she told me that, I'm thinking, now that's uh, advice that you would get from someone who once managed a motley crew. <laughs> yeah. But, uh, <laughs> he's used to dealing with people puking <laughs> on the floor. Yeah, so, he's got uh, all kinds of remedies I'm for, sure. you know, whatever ailed those guys on the road. So I start see. drinking alcohol, huh? Yeah. <laughs> so that was interesting, and that was the kind of uh, sort of random celebrity encounter that... Uh, Occurred throughout the trip. Yeah. On and off the ship. <laughs> That's pretty cool. <laughs> now, did your uh, wife have motion sickness from the boat, or was it from the uh, languid thrusting of the, that the, uh, your time spent in the island? I don't know. Probably a combination <laughs> of both. At that <laughs> point, it was the boat, though. It, was, it yeah. did get kind of rough out did there. Did it? Yeah. Noticeable at times? That you yeah, I could notice it. I, I'm not really affected by motion sickness so yeah. i didn't get any of that but i could definitely uh you know feel the ship moving and they had a disco ball up above the stage it was like swaying back and forth oh, so. okay there you go but they had, uh, the the stage setup was pretty good they had a s- single tank turret I sticking saw that. straight yeah. out toward the audience that and shot streamers out at everyone <laughs> did it you, you yeah. streamers that's funny <laughs> You know, from the the photos I saw, well, as far as the creatures, uh, like the outfits or whatever, yeah, it really worked on Tommy. Did you have you seen pictures of Tommy, yeah, he Tommy cool. from those shows? Yeah. yeah, it looked really, yeah, like it really looked good. It was a, it, like something they should, well, they probably won't, but they could tour a major tour with uh, with that look. I think. Why not? Yeah, and Paul had a half shirt on. <laughs> I uh, saw that. It was like a half tank top. Yeah. Yeah. And there were a few times he just p- 
pulled it up over his nipples and uh, just showed off his entire torso to the crowd. Just to let them see what he's working with? Or was there a reason? No reason. Just wanted to show <laughs> his he nipples. Doesn't, he them. doesn't need a reason okay. for that. Sure. Wow. It's kind of like uh, similar to our Mendoza photo gallery that we've got going on the Facebook page. <laughs> Just stripping his clothes off on the pool deck, what? attracting men and women into his <laughs> orbit. <laughs> a crowd just appears around him. As it, soon as it we have the sh- photographic proof. Yeah. So he was by the pool deck. He's just popping his shirt off in front of everyone. Pretty and, much. And yeah. here comes a crowd. Yeah, it's it's we have photographic proof. It's on on the Facebook page. So uh, so yeah, there's a lot of that going on. A lot of uh, you know. Um, random sightings of uh, dignitary, so to speak. So yeah, that was pretty cool. So, with any Kiss concert that anyone's gone to in the last twenty years, there's pretty much somewhere between twelve to who knows fifty thousand people, depending what the show. I don't know how many people are at the Kiss cruise per show. Do you know how big each? Because you said it's broken up into two nights for the makeup show. I want to say the capacity of that theater is like. 1500 that's pretty awesome so yeah i mean everyone has a good seat 1500 yep it was uh it was pretty cool to see them in that uh small of a venue do they um still pull out any of the usual tricks or is there really no room for that stuff i mean paul probably doesn't need to fly through the crowd to stand on a mini stage there's none of that there's no pyro no no explosions that's probably not a good idea you don't want to goof around on a cruise ship. no i don't think they're they're allowed uh, to do that, so. yeah, but it was good. It uh, sounded good in there, and um, and then for the uh, <coughs> the unmasked show, first night there, they really uh, me being my uh, first time, they uh, really rolled out the uh, rarities. Although people who were there last year said that a lot of them. Had had been repeated from the previous well, year. You only have so many songs. But right? they did. Uh, they opened with "I Stole Your Love." Oh, always a great opener. Yeah. Um, let's see. They did uh, most of "Hotter Than Hell." Really? And I'm talking. Uh, they did Mainline, right? Mainline. They did all the way. They did. Uh, I'd like title to see cut. all the way live. That's cool. Uh, got to choose. Um, Watching you and uh, going blind. Eric yeah. Singer uh, lead vocal on Mainline, or was did Paul reclaim his? Uh, no, I think it was Eric Singer. Okay, so uh, so that was cool. Um, played great. Yeah, and uh, all good. So, hmm. so my next question, but maybe going back to the makeup show. You know, when you go see Kiss live. Paul Stanley's the over the top preacher or front man, right? The rock and roll preacher. Does he scale that back in an intimate setting or has he got it dialed up to ten? No, he had it dialed up to ten. <laughs> <laughs> so was it even more like in a smaller setting, you know, he's he's doing that character for a building that seats twenty thousand. When he's doing it for fifteen hundred, is it over the top or is it fi- is it acceptable or is it almost like cartoonish at that point? No, it seemed fine to me. Yeah, okay. No. Right. Because, I mean, I feel like also everyone there knows Kiss so well, he almost would have to do that with a wink. You know what I mean? Because it's like when when you get the casual fan, he's he's preaching to the, uh, I don't want to say he's that. He's trying to convert. Yeah, perhaps. right. It's not the converted as much, you know. So, interesting. What about the unmasked? Is that more of a, we're just chilling, we're not... Yeah, he's a yeah. lot more reserved right, for okay. that. Um, so other rarities they did for that, they did Plaster Caster, which was great. They did uh, A World Without Heroes. How did that turn out? It was good. Yeah? Yeah, it came out good. Um, let's see. What How else? How did Gene sound? Gene sound Still great. great. Yeah. yeah. Awesome. That's exciting. World Without Heroes. Was it like, was there anything that they played on either show that wasn't like met with an ovation? Was there anything that was like, eh? No, right? There's, there's probably nothing. I can't imagine. They could play right. Boomerang and people would probably flip out, right? Loving it. They'd I flip mean. out of the boat. <laughs> 
I mean, and that's, into the ocean. In that setting, I feel like they're going to get an ovation for pretty much everything. Well, it's funny you bring that up. During the uh, Q&A, one of the questions was, uh, are there any songs from the back catalog that you would try to, uh, that would, if you could, you would redo them to try to make them more popular? Question along those lines. Yeah. Paul's answer was, um, not really. Those songs are forgettable for a reason. <laughs> and then the crowd started booing really? at that answer. <laughs> they, they booed him a couple times at his answer. <laughs> He's the guy who is responsible, one but of the guys. Uh, uh, say so they, they were all started booing, and his response to that was, have you forgotten about Cadillac Dreams? <laughs> And then uh, Gene actually, in the context of that same conversation, mentioned Boomerang. Really? Which, uh, if I'm not mistaken, is still the worst song we've tackled. I I don't know if it can be topped. It's that, and uh, it never goes away, right? Aren't those the two worst songs that we've done? It wasn't a good one. (laughs) And they're both so forgettable. I couldn't. I couldn't. Describe musically what goes on in no, but I just those are the head. two that I remember. That yeah. we were well, like I mean, hated. Boomerang, I think that's the infamous one. Yeah, yeah, that's just that stinks on ice, as they say. Yeah, so Gene and Paul were both on the QA together, or was the whole, the whole band, band was up the there? Band? Yeah. Okay, it was on the last night. And uh, our boy, uh, give me a second, I look up his name here. He was one of the people who got picked to ask a question. You had to submit the questions. Was it Michael? It was Michael. Our listener, Michael. Our uh, Harold Ramis lookalike. Um, let's see. I think what's his last name? Pepper uh, Pepperoncini, <laughs> something like Ca- that. Cavaccini. Yeah. Cavaccini. Like that. I, I, it's Italian. Yeah. Nice guy. And yeah. encountered him a few times uh, on or on and off the boat. But his question was. Uh, would you ever consider doing an an album of all new music done acoustically? Hmm. Hmm. Paul uh, rejected that idea, <laughs> saying that uh, they wouldn't want to not have Eric Singer on the album. That was his reaction. That's real funny. <coughs> so but that was cool. He got uh, picked to be one of the people asking the questions. A, you know, though, that's as with the uh, popularity of the Unplugged album. That's not uh, that's not something that's uh, inconceivable. Yeah, I think that could be effective. And does Absolutely. that something that we talked about on Pod? Th- I don't remember where we talked about things, but I remember Eric Singer said that uh, Unplugged was possibly his the best he's ever played. I feel like I've heard that in an interview somewhere, but I can't place mm. where it was. But, like, one of his crowning moments of his career is that Unplugged album. Just for, like, you know, uh, probably tastefulness, the way the tone of the drums came. I'm thinking, you know, it's not uh, the technical playing that he's talking about, but just one of his proudest moments is how that turned out. Oh, yeah. So yeah, I mean, it should be. Yeah. So, how about some more encounter stories? Because <laughs> um, that boat was loaded with people that, you know, Noteworthy encounters, noseworthy encounters. Um, well, I mean, pretty much all the guys in the bands were milling around, pretty ex- accessible. Um, I noticed that pr- pretty much all of the King's X performances drew out the most, uh, most of the guys in the other bands. Every time they played, there were at least eight or ten guys in the crowd who are from the other bands. King's X is it. a a band's band. Yeah. yeah, as I was saying, they're like a musician's band. But yeah. They were great, of course. Um I'd say the 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 well the random encounters were Mendoza in Grand Cayman. He was outside the Swarovski store. <laughs> I, saw I noticed that in the picture that yeah. you posted. He's outside the the crystal jewelry yeah. store or whatever. Yeah. <laughs> Picking up a new a uh, dream catcher. new uh, <laughs> Prince Albert uh, a, a <laughs> adornment, I'm sure. But uh, that could be fun. <laughs> so he was with uh, Dr- Jerry Gaskill, drummer from Kings X, and uh, 
yeah, I just caught them out of the corner of my eye, and I just interrupted their conversation. Yeah. Said, hey, can I get a picture? And a for p- a split second, I thought he was supremely annoyed by that, and then he was just like, yeah, brother, come on. You know? <laughs> okay. And yeah. then we took a picture, and that was fine. But for a for a split second, he gave me, shot me a look like he was going to, you tear, know. Tear his shirt off. Yes. You exactly. probably ex- you probably frightened him. I just could have. started barking at him <laughs> when he was talking to someone. He didn't know what was going on. And then he looked. He saw that you were a man was of peace. and was Overwhelming there any masculinity <laughs> colliding. Yeah. Was, there, was there any involuntary uh, movements, any involuntary uh, abdominal movements that you n- thought about later? Not on my part. No. no. <laughs> I was just, just kind of caught up in the moment, seizing the opportunity. Yeah. So I mean, speak. like you're not going to do that, you know. You see him. Yeah, you had to, especially how much we've talked about Marco Mendoza on this show. We would be disappointed if you didn't yeah. get a picture with him. So glad that happened. Did you have any conversation at all, or was that about it? Just that the was picture? about it. That was a uh, a quick quick uh, encounter. Um, then in Cozumel at a one of the shops over there, um, we were in there, and Scotty Hill of Skid Row mm. came walking in with his son. Son's name is Marshall, of course. <laughs> there you go. Um, but he was cool. It, it actually was pretty funny. He's, he, uh, yeah, I just said, hey, Scotty Hill, how's it going? And just ma- started making some small talk. He's like, so where are you from? I'm like, uh, I'm from uh, Chicago. Yeah. He's like, oh, cool, congratulations. I'm like, you're congratulating me for living, being from Chicago. He's like, "No, the Cubs." Oh, <laughs> and I was like, "Oh yeah, yeah, you the Cubs." I'm, I'm actually originally from Detroit, so yeah. I don't care about the Chicago teams. But yeah, yeah, it was pretty cool. So, but he was a really nice guy yeah. and uh, played his ass off on the cruise. Really, are you you a Skid Row fan at all, Nick? Um, yeah, they, to an extent. Um, I haven't kept up with them over the years, really. Yeah, first um, couple albums, though. Yeah, yeah. Uh, Slave to the Grind. Yeah. Um, the B-Side Ourselves EP was fantastic yeah. as well. Yeah, a lot of good guitar playing in that band. Yeah. Um, good sets. Um, and then also in Cozumel, I noticed him on the street, but I didn't say anything. I, sh- I regret not doing it, but... Uh, Derek St. Holmes mm. was walking behind him, and I realized it was him because he had two earrings on, one in each ear, and then like big one of those big old chunky bracelets. Right. And I was like, that's Derek St. Holmes. Because <laughs> without those things, he'd just look like somebody's dad. Right. Know? Those, those like uh, older rockers have that thing. They have like the right jewelry where you know oh that that guy's from one of the it bands. does yeah. it, it takes him uh, to the next level and you and it's one of those things where somehow even if other guys try to look like that you can just tell the difference like that guy's not in a band that guy's just a fan that guy's in one of the bands i mean even off stage you could just tell it's did weird. you see brad whitford i didn't see him out and about That's our too bad listener uh tony who posed for a picture with him with Andy observed that he <laughs> looks like a guy who would run a model train <laughs> shop. Uh, yeah, and uh, didn't he though? He did. Yeah. It was a it was a astute observation <laughs> on your part. Uh, I saw Doug Aldrich a lot. Mm. I didn't stop for a photo, but he was uh, milling about. Um, and. Uh, Second, n- second to last night or the last night, we were eating at the uh, at the uh, Chinese place, and uh, Paul and his family were like r- r- kitty corner from us, about ten feet o- away from us, waiting to get into the Benihana style you restaurant. Have to wait. You <laughs> they were waiting for them to clear the place out so they could get oh, okay. him and Gene's family. Oh, in there. okay, so. got it. So I think they threw out whoever was in there at the time. Really? That was that. <laughs> that's part of the, uh, the, the, I don't know what package that's part of that you had to pay extra for. Yeah. <laughs> yeah the right. evacuation the, package. The get kicked out by Paul uh, <laughs> package. But his whole family was there, his wife, all of his kids. His son's band was one of the uh, acts, the dives is what they're called. What would you think? 
They were pretty good. They were power pop, you know, Beatles, cheap trick sounding. They did a cover of Heroes, which was pretty good. That's cool. And yeah, the kids got a lot of energy. Can play a pretty good guitar. So Plays and sings. Right. Yep. He sings too. Yeah. How's his voice? His voice is is kind of uh, it's not as full and throaty as his dad's. It's a little shrill for me. But okay. the other guy, the other guitar player in the band, sang as well. Liked his voice a little better. So. Okay. How about some more of the opening acts, or I shouldn't say opening acts, but whatever. Other entertainment aside from Kiss, who else did we have? Uh, Dead Daisies. Dead Daisies. Caught about half of one of their sets. Um, it was okay, but um, I don't know. I, I do like their album, but I don't know. Something about the live show didn't uh, draw me in, even with Mendoza. I'd was he shirtless? Say. No, he had that woman's shirt on that he always wears, that, like, lavender silk thing. <laughs> okay, sure. It gets peeled off about a quarter of the way through the set. <laughs> Definitely gets unbuttoned almost immediately. <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> and uh, Anytime there's a, a full measure where he's just holding one note and he, he pops a button. <laughs> exactly. Um, he's a pick guy, right? No, no he's a no, finger guy. Finger he style, is? yeah. Okay. Yeah, because I think in our in this house right now there are like five Marco Mendoza picks that various people have sent well, us. That's because he doesn't use them, right? Yeah, there you go. He doesn't we, need. We them. have all of his picks. Yeah, everybody exactly. take them with the bass clef. Maybe and that's his signature. what uh, Shannon Tweed was tossing <laughs> out in the crowd. Mendoza picks. Yeah. Um, and who else is in the Dead Daisies? Notable Karabi. people. John, John Karabi is the singer. Aldrich is the uh, guitar player. Brian Tichy is the drummer, played with uh, Pride, and Gl- Pride and Glory, Zach Wilde. Oh, band. wow. Yeah. That's a blast from the past. Played with uh, Billy Idol. Uh, he was in Foreigner when I saw them over at Wolf Lake a few years ago. So he's journeyman. Yeah, he gets around. Yeah, um, That whole band is basically a bunch of journeyman yeah. ringer guys. Mm-hmm. Our, our boy Bob is a... Uh, not a fan of Brian Tichy and his uh, visual tricks that he's doing constantly well, behind the behind the kit. What kind are they? Is it like Ricky it Rocket, which is waving non-stop. his arms around, twirling the sticks, yeah, hitting the one stick on the snare and sh- firing it about fifty feet in the air and then catching it. He like does that a dozen <laughs> times during the set. Uh, he's pretty good about. He actually walked it past. Bob, when I was standing next to him, uh, I think during the Q&A, and Bob just, you know, got that (laughs) squinty-eyed look of rage. Yeah. Uh, Not a fan. Not a fan, huh? Just rubs him the wrong way. Yep. I could see that. Bob doesn't go for that shit. He doesn't go for that shit. Uh, Who else? We had, um, well, you had King's X. You talked about King's X, Skid Row. Um, oh, uh, Magnetico with that Rafael Moreira. Right, 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 right. What do you think? Uh, not good. That's uh, honestly, I, I didn't want to be a dick, but I was going to say that when you brought it up last time. That I bet that's not good. No, it's not. It, there's a reason why he's a side man. His yeah. singing and songwriting are just not up to par. Right. Play the hell out of a guitar, though. Sure. But, uh, yeah. So caught. Uh, they're set on the pool deck on the last full day, and it was not not very good. I'm afraid. It's too bad. What about uh, what? Did both Simmons kids have shows, or was it just Sophie? I saw clips of both of them. He tried them both out. Nick ended up being the special guest on the last uh, day that was what? not named until the last day. As, like, the special guest entertainer? Yeah, it was listed on the agenda as a special guest. But um. <laughs> We're always trying to do something <laughs> special and spectacular. That's but cool. it was neither of those <laughs> things. Um, no? We caught the last song of Sophie's set. Okay. okay. She had a drummer and an acoustic guitar player, and then her. Hmm. And when we got there, she brought a bunch of kids on stage, like, you know, young kids who were in the crowd, maybe 12 of them, and arranged them like a choir almost on stage. Are you sexy, baby girl? (laughs) 
Hell yes. <laughs> mm, shit. <laughs> Pretty much. That was it. <laughs> and uh, and they sang Uptown Funk. Okay. Um, and then she just abruptly ended the show. She's like, okay, I've got some kids up here. The show's over. And what, then what does that even mean? I don't know. It was very strange. You know, there's it this... It was nepotism at its worst. There's this park over here, not too far from where Chris and I live. And uh, they have little summer concerts on Sundays. And this summer I walked over to one of them. And the band did exactly the same thing. They played Uptown Funk and brought all the kids out to dance in front. Which is perfectly acceptable in a community park event in right. the summer. But... I don't know. Whatever. Um, oh, and Enough's Enough was on board, which I... Did you catch them? or I you, saw you one song them? of one of their sets that's a, more than I uh, <laughs> wanted to see, to be honest with you. Well, that's too bad. I don't care. Is there a reason you're not a fan of Enough's Enough? I just, I don't, that, uh, that whole, you know, peace sign, fluorescent color shtick is just doesn't work for me. And Chips, Chips Enough is the only guy left in the band who That's does That's all you it. need. Everybody <laughs> else is just, you know, doing the regular aging rocker look. So Nick's probably upset with you for saying that. Nick's big Enough's Enough fan. I, I'm just, I kind of wish there was more of a review, but it's okay. Just I'd, I'm curious how they sound because I've seen clips of uh, the current lineup and they st- Better than I thought it would be from the YouTube clips I've seen. I know that's a band that's originally from around here, from Blue Island, right? Yeah. They're probably not still based out of Blue Island, are they? Is Chips Enough uh, <laughs> a Blue Island guy? I don't know. <laughs> no, you don't know. Don't they always record in Chicago? They're one of the bands that uh, every time they go do something, they record in one of the, what the what is it, the record plant? What is the? CRC. Yeah. Chicago Recording Company. Maybe that's where they go. Yeah. Well, I could see that then. Maybe yep. he lives in Blue Island with uh, members of Survivor. And <laughs> <laughs> who else? What's that? Uh, I'm your vehicle baby band. Who were they? Uh, Ides of March. Ides of March. <laughs> All those guys are from around here. And, and there's a band that I don't even want to bring up. That's from Blue Island that hit it big Do it. back in the early 2000s. Do it. <sighs> anyway, what was their name? I I blocked them out. Oh, out of their dick. <laughs> I hated them. Uh, they had that What's the Dilio song. Yeah, they're terrible. Yeah, I hated they're them. Ca- they're called Nest. Nest, that's what they were. Oh. Like alternative radio band from yeah, like maybe 2001, two. I don't know, something I like don't that. Know. But we, I, we, didn't you play a show? Yeah, with our buddy Bob that we were talking about, yeah. who you know is a fill-in co-host on Pot of Thunder. Yeah, that's, God, I think I was, that might have been like 2000 maybe. I think I was still in high school. So, shit. Yeah. I would say the highlights uh, interaction between Bob and I were uh, we both made each other laugh hysterically at uh, separate occasions. I made him laugh hysterically when I said, Nick has the feet of a pterodactyl. <laughs> <laughs> Meaning you. I don't know how that came up. Yeah, I wonder. Uh, That's a strange. But I, I dropped that uh, and he just. He, he's couldn't stop laughing for about 15 minutes and then the same thing on the flip side happened when he informed me that there's a black porn star named nat turner are you aware of this uh i don't think so oh, but i don't know I don't, I don't get the that. reference what's the reference might have to Google uh, this? Yeah, do what uh, what are you gonna do now mm. maybe oh uh boy. i'll do probably just refer to something online some kind of structure happening here In your everyday lives outside of Pot of Thunder, when someone says something about looking something up, do you think of that song? Of course. I do (laughs) all the time. Oh, boy. All right. Nat Turner was an enslaved African-American who led the Nat Turner (laughs) Slave Rebellion of Slaves and Free Blacks (laughs) in Southampton County, Virginia, resulted in the deaths of 55 to 65 white people. That's a lot of blood. Wow. Never heard of him. But, uh, probably stuff. a big John Brown fan. 
Ray Victory fan. That's how that came up. We were discussing Ray Victory, and then he. So uh, honestly, that, that so that's like if there was a female ac- uh, African American actress that called herself Harriet Tubman. Exactly. Basically. Wow. Yes. Perfect so, analogy. So, I, and I remember Chris saying years ago when you guys both worked at Playboy that I'll paraphrase that oh, the there's Nat Turner's wiener. <laughs> All right. That. Uh, the adult film industry is one of the last refuges of uh, of just unapologetic racism and just well, everything. now it's the president of the United States, but that's another discussion. Um, was Nat Turner's wiener the original Nat Turner's wiener? <laughs> it's in a it's museum. A, it's a pencil sketch of it. Yeah, An archival. <laughs> sh- yeah. It's a daguerreotype. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> um. And then another couple of the highlights, or highlights, um, you know, several of them for me was encountering listeners. In addition to Mr. uh, Michael Pepperoncini. I wonder if he gets a royalty with every Papa John's pizza that's served (laughs) up. uh, (laughs) If not, he should. But... uh, uh, Joe, the uh, host of Podcast Rock City, mm. ah, yes, uh, ran into him and also... Uh, now, how did these encounters go? Was it like, I kind of think I've seen this guy before in a picture online, or what? what's the deal? Now, that, w- what's the deal, Leo? Is no, that not your exa- question? Well, not quite, not quite. Not quite. I can't get enough of Nat Turner. Yeah, <laughs> see? Handystuds.com. Yeah. <laughs> Wow. What was uh? Sorry. I can't remember. Um, um but no, uh, another listener uh, named Kevin Williams. He's the guy who designed that uh, recognized symbol oh. of excellence in Kiss Podcasting. Uh, the background, uh, yes, yeah, exactly. the blue and black thing. Yes. Yeah, cool. Uh, he knows Joe apparently, so he arranged that meeting. But I. Uh, Saw him as we were boarding the boat and hung out with him for most of uh, most of the cruise on and off. Uh, he was flying solo. His wife uh, said she wouldn't be caught dead on, on <laughs> something like that. <laughs> really? So, uh, yeah. Well. So he was there by himself, but apparently he's also friends and former band bandmates with the uh, current drummer of Skid Row. So hmm. that's interesting as well. Hmm. So, yeah, um, immediately after the uh, first Creature show, I sat down with the two of them uh, for an interview that I think ran on Podcast Rock City, and I told them we would play it on our show to uh, sort of cross-promote. So if you want to roll that, and we can, you know, do like we do a regular <laughs> song, we can take breaks. Okay, and give it the treatment. See That's what's fun. going on call bs if we feel we need to hopefully it came through because we were in the middle of the buffet restaurant after the show and there's a lot of people were you eating during the interview or no i was not (laughs) so we'll set this up one more time it's you it's joe from podcast rock city and uh pothead kevin williams Williams. from atlanta there we go okay all right um we're gonna try this See if it's loud enough. Three, two, one. What's up, everybody? Joe <laughs> here from Podcast Rock City. Uh, yeah, and I got Chris here from Pot of Thunder. You can say hello now. Oh, uh, hello now. <laughs> <laughs> and, <laughs> and I have Kevin from the Sweat. The shenanigans have begun already. Already. It's, like, yeah. it's instantaneous. It's zaniness. Yes. Do you hear what a pro he was? How he counted it in like that? We don't do stuff like that on this <laughs> show. We're total amateurs in comparison. We're not capable of that. We're actually so amateur that I'm going to start it over and <laughs> open it open it in a different player. Okay. All right, what was wrong with the other one? I don't think it was going to keep our stops. Damn. That's no Here good. Here we go. Here from Pot of Thunder. You can say hello now. Oh, uh, hello now. <laughs> <laughs> and I have Kevin from The Swear. What's up, guys? If you guys have never... Nothing. No, never mind. <laughs> Of the swear, you need to go and check out his band. Is, do you guys have a website? We do. What's swear.com. Swear.com. They have a few. Re- they got swear.com for their band. That's, I think so. That's got to be a, a, a 
they had to shell out some cash or get that one early. I'm thinking. Yeah, one or the other. That web address. They either had to get in on the ground floor. Probably. Or, yeah. Wow. Well, I'm checking out swear.com Hats after off the show. For, yeah. It might be the swear.com. I don't know. Oh. But whatever. Um, go. <laughs> I've been listening to them. They're really good. Okay, so Kevin did, wasn't in the show. He did his photo. Chris and I were in... Oh, it'll keep going. That's fine. Uh, Chris and I were in the show. Uh, all right, so this was your first Kiss Cruise indoor show. What would you think? Oh, it was great. It, uh, anybody who listens to our podcast knows that Nick is the big preachers guy, so... Uh, you know, I was trying to experience it for both of us, but uh, it was great. We were, um, upper deck, middle, perfect vantage point. Um, I was actually expecting it to be a little louder, but it was it was clear. It was clear. It was clear. It wasn't extremely loud, which made it clear. The reason why I expected it to be louder was because we were outside and the shows out there have been like mind yes, blowing. Yes, yes. But it but Kiss wasn't loud on their outdoor show. Is he saying that the other bands were extremely loud? Yeah, they really? were really loud. Huh. They, they had that uh, sound system cranking. Which is cool. I I had no no problem with it, but I just wonder why the difference between the other bands and Kiss. That's Usually it's the opposite. Yeah. Right. That's what yeah, I was you thinking. think the headliner is like, no, keep keep them turned down a little bit. Yeah. I'm listening to this interview and I'm thinking it's either for real atmosphere or you guys edited in like some uh, some atmospheric sounds of like from a shakies uh, <laughs> buffet or something. It was that, it was that kind of atmosphere, <laughs> Cause, believe me. Because that's that's the picture that's getting painted. It's not uh, you guys hanging out by entirely the entirely off hanging out by a vat of mojo fries. <laughs> What's pretty a mo- close to What's it. What's a mojo? Those are those fries? awesome orange. Fried potato. Oh, those things. things you loved. Oh, I right. loved them. I didn't know they're called Mojo fries. Wow. Okay, it's like a fried potato skin thing. Basically, yeah, or whatever. Not just the skin. It'll it'll stop a moose if <laughs> eating a few of those things. <laughs> and then they weren't really all that loud. What any of the songs they played make you go, "Whoa, awesome!" Well, the solo album cuts. That, uh, I already filled him in. Oh, uh, right, Kevin already knows. Sorry, Kevin. I'm, shake, I'm shaking my head over here. Uh, <laughs> uh, <laughs> solo album cuts again. Uh, Keep me coming was cool. That was I mean, pretty awesome. Somewhere back in the Chicagoland area, Nick was getting a little loud. <laughs> 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 uh, didn't they do Rock and Roll Hell also? Oh yeah, they did that too. Because I remember <laughs> that the other somewhere. one. Yep, exactly. <laughs> he had a chubby. Uh, yeah. Well, we got a new drop to put into the show. <laughs> he had a chubby. Mark at 144. Yeah, I'm sure you did. He uh, had a chubby. <laughs> yeah, expect child number three in about a <laughs> Awesome. Um, and then uh, I guess Rock and Roll Hell. Would be rock and Roll Hell, man. Damn, they pulled that out. Yeah. That was great. And the kids in the front were yelling, danger, danger, danger. I was wondering if we were going to get that. Yeah. Yeah, Maybe tomorrow were. night. Maybe they'll do it tomorrow night. Yeah, you think, think they'll mix it up? I'm thinking what do you think? so. I don't see why they wouldn't because they know that people were watching the show tonight simulcast. So they've got to throw... Is there anything to this that you guys are talking about? There's not. Okay. Um, I think... Uh, what? I heard that they deleted Strutter from the second night. Hmm. And uh, they they uh, swapped the order. It w- when... The night I saw them, they did Radioactive and Wouldn't You Like to Know Me Back to Back, followed by Calling Dr. Love. The next night, they did Radioactive, Calling Dr. Love, Wouldn't You Like to Know Me. So okay. little little minor alterations, but nothing, uh, nothing completely different. Something extra in, you know? Um, I, I guess I guess I'm not a, a, a as good of a Kiss fan as I as I say I am because I was watching Oakland in Denver. I, no, I, I, no. Didn't, I didn't go watch the simulcast. I kind of wanted to see it, you know. No, yeah. Firsthand. Even though we're telling you, I was trying to understand that. He said Oakland and Denver, right? Yes. Okay. I thought he said Oprah in Denver, and I was like, <laughs> "What is that?" And, oh, okay. Never mind. What's up? I promise you, man. It's really the costumes were beautiful. Yeah, that was. Oh, the other. I did get to see that, right? Yeah. That the other funny yeah. thing that happened that I, you might not have noticed. This is a good bit. That I, <laughs> I, 
<laughs> actually uh Surpri- I, I'm glad I didn't bring it up so you can hear it as I tell it on here, but this was good. She had some big haystack for I had a huge chick in front of me. Um, but at the end of Dr. Love, uh, Gene, uh, you know, as they're doing the, the big ending or whatever, Gene just gave, him, gave himself the thumb, like pointing it, you know, I'm Dr. Love. Right. He lifted the base to reveal the creature's cod. Right, oh, yes. The I did see that. The correct copy. <laughs> right. And then he tapped it like right. three times. <laughs> and then he did, did you happen to notice that he walked behind Tom? Three times. Yeah, he did. <laughs> I was I was watching him or exactly what had happened. He, he, he pointed himself with his thumb and like, tapped his cod piece. Like he's either uh, three times. trying to get back to Kansas or conjuring Beetlejuice. Yeah, who knows, man. <laughs> but uh, that was pretty funny. I'm glad I uh, was watching him <laughs> at that point. Uh, and then put his finger in his mouth and then goosed him. Yep. Three or four times. <laughs> it was so funny. Yeah, Gene, I was like, he's he was feeling good. He was, he, was, he, was, he was in a good mood. He was in a good I did see Shannon there. She was throwing picks out yep. to the crowd yep. before the crowd. rolled cr- in. That was a big deal. Yeah. I, I really think everybody. Mm-hmm. I guess that that's true then. That's that, that's verified. I guess now, now we can believe it. Yeah, I didn't believe it before. Okay. Stuck it out as far as um as far as energy for a crowd goes. They were really excited, especially after those first few songs. They realized, all right, we're gonna see some shit here. Yeah, I think everybody, ourselves included, sort of expected like a creature's ear at set, meaning right. Um, no love gun. I mean, no lick it up. No heavens on fire. Which they did avoid all this. Right, yeah, they did. Uh, instead of doing like, you know, before I showed up on the cruise, I Wikipedia it, it, it. That's what we're doing, Wikipedia. It is now. And, it's uh, a verb. And we're copywriting and, uh, it. Right. <laughs> and, uh, you know, they had the creature set list. Um, and I, I looked it up, and of course, as we were talking about earlier, we were, everybody was wondering, are they going to do some I still love you. Yeah. Right. And then I thought at the beginning, I thought when he started to do Black Diamond, yeah, I thought the same thing. I too. thought he was gonna, and I looked over at my buddy, and I was like, "No way!" And then he went into Black Diamond, which was still fine. There's nothing it's wrong easy with to that. To say they won't break it out tomorrow, we'll but I I thought Paul sounded pretty good. Paul sounded great. I thought yeah. he sounded great. You know, it was like when he was going during the songs, it was full on. In between, when he was doing his little raps, he was a little raspy, but I was pleasantly surprised and. and really happy yeah, it was cool to see him bust out the bc rich eagle oh man yeah, wasn't that awesome through the whole set except for the end where he's got to play the iceman and then bring the fake iceman out so he can smash, smash it yeah right. the and one then, that has yeah. it so probably has stickers it. that look like pickups yeah <laughs> so. is that what it is really it's got stickers it's just nothing well, i don't know about that but it's obviously okay. a you know bottom of the barrel Guitar hero, thing. guitar, yeah, yeah it right. just you know splits in half with the minor impact on the stage. Right. So the BC Rich Eagle, that's the uh, the leopard print guitar, mm-hmm. right? That he's yeah, the no, leopard print. He played most of the set, and then also a zebra print. That he really broke out occasionally. Now was that? I don't know if either one of you know the answer. Was the zebra print uh, back? Was that something he had on the Creatures tour, or was that a new? twist on the uh, uh, leopard print. Yeah, it's not ringing a bell. Hmm. Someone smarter than us could will have been know a, the answer. Could have been an animalized reference for all we know. Yeah. Probably not. I almost want to say there was like a flying V with a zebra print that's coming to my head, but it might not have even been Kiss playing it. I don't know. Hmm. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> they saw it in half. Yeah. It <laughs> taps it on the stage at first. <laughs> <laughs> and that's it. And it's kindling. Yeah. Yeah, you start a fire with it. And then Tommy had the free pickup ace model, although it didn't have the, I don't think it had the ace inlay on the headstock. No, it didn't. The split diamond. He too. posted on Twitter about two weeks ago. Yeah. It said packing guitars. And that's when I realized they were going to be dressed like the I Love It Loud video. Yep, yep, yep. You know, because Ace was in that. And he looked fine in that suit. He, yeah. You know, he looked fine. He looked comfortable. He, he, he actually danced around a little bit, which caught me off guard because... Nick would say more than fine in that suit. I'd say, I think he looked fantastic in that suit. 
great costume choice. Thayer? Yeah. 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 I thought he pulled it off huge time. Plus, I, it's, <laughs> I just like the fat, you know, he doesn't have that ornamentation or at the shoulder area. You know, it's got to make it, that. it's got to make it tough to play. What did, um, I didn't even see any, I think I, I saw maybe in one photo Eric Singer's face behind the kit. Did he have any kind of, like, costume wise? Well, I can't even think of what it would be. No, nah, I, 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 nothing. I mean, he stood up a couple times, just uh, n- nothing that I, I, that I would recognize. Hmm. Me. Tommy don't move. Tommy yeah, don't he dance. Was, he, was, <laughs> he was into it. They were all into it. It was, uh, it was really excellent. So just curious, were there any nods to Eric Carr at all? Um, well, you know, I couldn't see I couldn't see Eric Singer's costume, but it looked like it had that low cut yeah. in the front, that U cut. Right. Um, well, there, well, see, you're, you're, you're missing the big one. A, a huge tank turret right, sticking there, out of the... Uh, front of the drum riser which shot out streamers. Streamers, right. At the beginning and at the end of the show, which oh, yeah. was amazing. So that was the, the big phallic nod. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, as soon as they opened up the curtain, the crowd went crazy. Um, yeah, really cool stage set. Um, yeah, no pyro, because obviously they, they can't. can't yeah. I often wonder why Gene, because he could still do the blood thing. But he doesn't. He has never done it on the cruise. And I often wonder why. Maybe he's just like, I don't want to deal with it. Maybe they won't let him because of the rug. <laughs> yeah, who knows? Who yeah. knows? I, uh, my, my co- okay, we're going to talk about uh, not messing up the venue's carpeting. Brought oh to boy. mind a story. So oh. let's hear what it is. Oh, boy. <laughs> I know what it is already. Some pot of thunder got clapped all from the venue. Throwing a birthday cake. <laughs> so, you know, maybe the same principles at work here. Even, yeah. Even with the mighty Gene Simmons. Yeah. No. So, yeah. Absolutely true story. Still angry about that. Nick and I had a band. We had our our big show that we uh, put a lot of time and effort into. Sold out, turning people away at the door. <laughs> we got a couple paid. of libations ruined everything. We got paid zero dollars because of the damage done to the venue, because and that wasn't. It was like ten dollar tickets. Probably that wasn't. That wasn't like a five yeah. buck show. That was. Yeah, I mean, not that ten. Orange was cake lot, frosting. That was the co- the color. We can't pay you because of the orange getting the stains out from the orange cake frosting that was thrown about to the theater vestibule. That was part one. There was. This is absolute bullshit. The next one. And also, this doesn't cost money. There were chewed Laffy Taffies spit all over the stage. <laughs> there wasn't. And How if do you there know they were Laffy Exactly. Taffies? And if there were, that doesn't cost money. I mean, I get the stain thing, but a Laffy Taffy on the stage, you just scrape it off real quick. Big <laughs> fucking deal. Uh, and then, well. a, then some costumes from an upcoming production were ripped. <laughs> Which yeah, we had like criminals in our band. Basically, basically. Well, they just were raiding things and ruining it. And ble- oh, one subhuman. Got, one got blood on it and it got ripped. Yeah. So there you go. So now and that doesn't was it feel good to have something that Gene Simmons got the same uh, finger in his face? Read the riot <laughs> act from the Norwegian <laughs> cruise line that you are not to spit blood in our venue. Yeah, I guess so. Feels good, doesn't it? I wish they would have told us ahead of time. We could have used that money. I think I'm, I'm partially blaming Chris because he never uh, docked us in pay when we did damage to his place when we played there. I guess we never did damage, but I mean, we we had no rules there. Got our full uh, full money. Well, you never end up really damaging no. anything. So yeah, it's true. But how much money did you guys lose that night? A few hundred bucks. Yeah, like five hundred bucks. Jeez, that's a decent chunk. That's a significant amount. Oh, well, they. They went ahead and uh, got the whole damn venue <laughs> shampooed. <laughs> got it so. detailed. Yeah. yeah exactly. Exactly. They uh, jacked it up on your dime. Yeah. It was overdue for the cleaning. This was their excuse. They were just mad at us. I remember being... Of course they that's were. That's all it was. Everybody got mad at you. I remember being furious. <laughs> furious. <laughs> Rogue fest people. Yeah. yeah. You know, and I think uh, as if we 
continue on, I think I discussed uh, your your booking history. Oh God! I think we get into well, it a little bit. I just remember being particularly furious with every single person, every other person show? in the band. Yeah, that was the one. Absolutely. Well, no, that wasn't the only one. But I remember being absolutely furious. Just because people were pigs. Yeah. Was the show? The show wasn't bad. It wasn't good. Was it not good? <laughs> not that good. I thought it was fun. <laughs> I enjoyed it. I was, was a good proud time. for it. That was a, all right. The well, drunken, dusty roads routine was classic. See, there you go. And also, one of the best live things that I don't. E- I mean, I was on the stage, so I don't know how the effect was to the audience. But that's when uh, the singer of the band went in the boner cloner, <laughs> and then his almost exact twin brother came out in the exact same outfit of him and they both were doing somersaults that's, all yeah, over the that's stage. True. Kind of a Freddie Mercury now here. It was, a, kind it was of a, a spectacle. I yeah. liked it. I enjoyed that show. You didn't see that shit from a local band. I mean, you see that in a big production, but I mean, we were going above and beyond. So I would. S- that was second to your, uh, what was this joint on the south side with the uh, the word? Champ's Rock yeah, Room. That was second to Champ's Rock Room in terms of the, the palpable tension <laughs> in there. So you know you didn't know what was gonna happen next. Champ's rock room ended the band. That That's was how a whole bad that was. <laughs> that was it. Another show I was furious yeah. with literally everybody. He wheeled his half stack off stage in the middle of the <laughs> set. <laughs> how disgusted he was with everybody else uh, yeah. on stage. That, that we could do a whole episode <laughs> about my my uh, vantage point from there. Uh, so much shit going on. Yeah. T- uh, Champs Rock Room, way ahead of Towel. T- is it Towel or it's Towel? Towel. Yeah. Towel Theater is a distant second from Champs Rock Room. Champ- it's still uh, good. Champs Rock Room. Glad was I was there. Champs Rock Room was like the the breeding ground of Disturbed. And that was like their pride and joy. You know, Disturbed used to play here oh, all the time. Those guys still pop in once in a while. Did they know. really? Yeah, that Were was they? like their thing. This, oh, this Champs. I champs. thought you meant the Toll. No, theme. no, no. <laughs> champs was like their, you know, this is oh, where they uh, cut yeah, their great. teeth. Yeah. And then you guys basically staged your version of Altamont <laughs> there. That's and then the place that closed eventually. Yeah, of course it did. <laughs> But anyway, I think we get into yeah. sort of mm, booking boy. history here. They're not going to be booked for a Norwegian cruise, probably. <laughs> Andy and Nick's band? Yeah, probably not. Right. And apparently a Chuck E. Cheese either, because <laughs> they got banned from there. Yeah, they... they the, the only... The not true, however, <laughs> would have been... <laughs> <laughs> However, it would have been true yeah, if we'd been booked there ever before. If we had the opportunity, yeah. we would have so been. So, not happen. entirely false, but not factual, unfortunately. That booked them more than once was my venue. You owned a venue? I owned a coffee shop. Oh, that's cool. I had a club, too. That's pretty funny. Like, I was literally the only venue owner that ever booked their band twice. I don't know. Uh, fact checker on that one. Got a uh, Marx Brothers joke there. Oh, I owned a club. If I, if I owned a club, I'd beat you over the head with it. <laughs> That's, <pretty good. laughs> That's a good one. Just jarred that one loose. Yeah. So who else booked you twice? I'm trying to think. Nobody. I'm, that's what I'm saying. Fa- no. do we, let's literally do a quick n- fact check. Literally nobody. I honestly don't think there was any. No. Uh, yeah, there you go. There was one. In that band? Yes. Can no. you remember? Mm. No, I don't remember. It was our old high school when they had us come oh, back. Oh, that was disastrous. The police were called. The police were called. <laughs> I, I had to leave the venue. <laughs> Sounds good to me. Andy, Andy was like uh, David Lee Roth in the Panama video being dragged out of there. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> the guys had riot helmets and yeah. whatnot. <laughs> Yeah, that was a good no, one. It was, yeah, Andy had to leave. And I, that's a great analogy. <laughs> I could picture it now. It was like, dude, just get out of here. Just go now. I remember I, called, the police were coming. I remember uh, the Blues Brothers. He, he yeah. slipped out behind the drum riser. Yeah. yeah. So that was that was one of those days where I got to be the lazy one who didn't put any gear away. They're like, dude, just get out of here. They're looking for you. Yeah. Just w- got in the car and drove home. <sighs> I wish that some of these stories were made up. <laughs> 
I wish people like could legitimately say no. Come on, yeah. They, you're like these guys have these guys have an incident for every show. This is complete nonsense. No, it it's, it actually happened. We have an incident for everything we do. Yeah, in, like, just any walk of life. I mean, Doc McGee in the bathroom. There you go. I mean, it's even extended to our uh, significant others. Yeah. Exactly. Through marriage. What are the chances? Is right. It, <laughs> in fact, I booked them like a half dozen times. Testament to my friendship team. and amazingness. Nah, more like foolishness, <laughs> idiocy, <laughs> self destructiveness. Go to, go to. Do you still have the coffee shop? No. I don't have the club. That shows that we're not businessmen. No, if, I, if, I if I had the. I, I think if we both still own those respective venues, we wouldn't be here right now. Yeah. Because we wouldn't have two nickels. We wouldn't be broke. Yeah. It's so true. There's yeah. no money in it. So um, I wonder what they'll do, you know, next year. I mean, well, you did hear what he said. He said, we're talking about doing next year. Yeah. I believe just as we're recording this, just today, they announced uh, Kiss Cruise 7. Well, he announced it yeah. at the Q&A. Oh, okay. Yeah. Yeah. Sailing out of New Orleans. Oh, wow. Did not know that, but yeah. He so. didn't mention uh, the specific stops. I don't know if they release that information yet but it's looking like uh maybe uh maybe straight south into mexico i don't know interesting though obviously they're gonna do something next year i mean there's there's kind of uh what 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 have been the themes i know they did a live dress to kill what were the other themes that you could they were just regular just makeup shows. makeup shows yeah. like like the they, they wore the Sonic Boom costumes, okay. um, and they wore um, I guess it was the Alive costume the first time I think I can't remember. Without Someone better help that woman. Yeah, jeez, <laughs> poor woman's choking back there. Mendoza better uh, come Heimlich that woman. Yeah, she, maybe, <laughs> yeah maybe that's why she's choking. She was uh, <laughs> sick. Uh, <laughs> Too big of a fork full of the clams casino <laughs> there. So goodness, just kidding. I, I don't know. Help, that someone is. help that woman. Yeah, play that and back. Make, Maybe that's the woman who uh, the sh- from the shaved beaver <laughs> uh, segment. Let's hear this. They wore. Um, I guess it was the alive costume the first time. I think I can't remember without looking at my pictures, but I believe it was the alive costumes for that. They haven't done the love gun look. You know, yeah, and I don't think that they'll ever do the dynasty. No, I, I, but Tommy in a cape. I don't know. Yeah. So I, I'm pretty sure next year will be the uh, the Lost Elder tour. Well, they'll, <laughs> they'll do a full rendition of the album. With, yeah. With uh, everybody you know, together. With the little people just playing the, the characters. Yeah. I was just about to say just the boy. Just the boy. On the first Kiss Cruise, in the acoustic set, Paul did break into a little bit of that song, and the crowd went fucking nuts. And it was just like, it's just because you're never going to get the chance to see it, and they know it. That's why when they played The Oath on the cruise a few years ago, and then again, well, the past couple of years, every time it starts, watch the video, the crowd's just... (laughs) Real. The people who are invested enough to come on this cruise... Probably a big fan. Yeah. So all in all, we'll come to an end here. All in all, I give I gave it a ten. The show, uh, except for the Amazon lady standing in front of me. The music was great. The set list I thought was great. Um, set list is cool. They like, kind of started trotting out all the old, you know. Yeah. After they gave us too. after like the solo albums. You know. <laughs> but by then I was already like full on erect. Yeah. And there was no. <laughs> <laughs> they could do anything well, that, at that, that point. That should have been enough to knock down that lady. Was <laughs> in front of me. You know, I don't know what happened. <laughs> Thank you, Chris, for you believing in me. You should have some of that uh, Viagra and, 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 and it, from Mexico. It's readily available. <laughs> it is readily available. Yes. Yeah, so yeah, you can just buy Viagra and Cialis right that's over just, the counter. Yeah, that's an over-the-counter deal out there, huh? Yep. Did you stock up on anything? I did not. No. What about no, like uh, uh, the typical thing that people buy when they go to Mexico? Bottles of vanilla. Any of that for you? No, didn't no. Uh, didn't notice. No, that was a thing. I think it's extremely. Uh, is it less expensive there than it is here? Interesting. Yeah. Oh well. Something else uh, that was kind of funny that while we were on Cozumel, we stopped in a little cantina for some uh, 
ceviche and a couple drinks. And, uh, that they could go one of two ways. <laughs> what would those ways be? <laughs> either be a, yeah, it was good, or we shit for two days. No, no, it was good. Okay, it was yeah. The, it went that way, but the music was all pit bull. <laughs> <laughs> and I just I, I just picked this place at random the entire time we there. It was just one Pitbull song after wow. another. Was it just and like, like Pitbull deep cuts from his early Cuban DJ days? So it's just excellent. Like his entire discography on shuffle, pretty Seemed much. Seemed like it, wow. or so, or maybe some satellite radio station or Pandora Is station that still or something. There was Pitbull. What was it called? Worldwide Radio or something? That was a serious channel for a while. I don't know if that's still going. Maybe that's what it was. But it, it, did it play only Pitbull? No, I don't know. Maybe at certain times of yeah. the day. I don't know. But <laughs> Yeah, so that was the place for me. It was perfect. Free corner. As my old drummer refers to them as lumber pills. Lumber pills. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you take those and you definitely have a four-hour boner. It does not go away. Yeah. And you can't put your arms down either. That's it. <laughs> yeah. <it's the> same. <laughs> now, can you, either of you guys verify that? Have you ever tried that <laughs> shit? <laughs> no. Yet. I don't know what that means. Yeah. I'll have I to. Uh, uh, it's, it, it, is it affect your blood circulation to the point where you can't put your arms down? I'm going oh. to. Uh, I'll hopefully, next episode, I'll have some information. I, I I know a couple of people in the medical field. I'll see you if can I get one. Or well, I'll, I'll just see if, the, if uh, they've ever experienced somebody coming in with something like that. And for okay. some reason, the arms have to be up. Interesting. That's yeah. very interesting. I mean, I've never heard that before. Uh, in fact, I don't even remember him saying that. <laughs> that's that's pretty... Uh, any Anybody out there who's taken lumber pills, is, is, can you not put your arms down? Does that mean... I mean, that would, that would make it kind of hard to jerk off if you were on fire. Oh, uh, that's a... What a terrible situation to get yourself in. Yeah. If I your mean, woman falls asleep and you can't put your arms down, what do you do? Just start, yeah. just start rubbing. I mean, start how, how, do you, how are you supposed yeah. to, uh, to get that erection to dissipate? Yeah. I mean, it's, that's if you got one of those four-hour ones, they drain the blood. Oh, God. That I know. Yeah, yeah. with a needle, right? Like I mean, I don't know, no, but. Yeah. Yeah, that's some serious shit, I don't know, shit, but I've been huh? told. It's a uh, uh, serious uh um, impact your bloodstream, right? I would think so. It's not to be messed with, necessarily. Like, uh, it's, it reminds me, I'm going to another old joke, another old showbiz veteran joke. Uh, Milton Berle saying uh, when he gets an erection, he passes out. There you go. He's a well-known, uh, well-endowed individual. So if he had a four-hour one, one, forget it, man. Yeah. You know, I thought I wrote that joke. No, that was the uh, election day uh, Chinese neighbor one. <laughs> that was, that was yours. That's, I'm trying to come up with the words to describe what that looks like. Yeah. <laughs> Arms extended, like a peace sign. Yeah. <laughs> Some sort of weird coat hanger. Or <laughs> anyway, listen. Check out Pot of Thunder. Check out the swear. They're the the swear are awesome. Pot of Thunder is one of my favorite shows. If you don't know about it, they do one song every week. Where can they get your Where can they get your podcast? I get it on iTunes. Besides that, uh, it's, it's on Stitcher. It's on Libsyn. Um, but look for us on social media and we'll Facebook. Up with the links and stuff. And can your can your music be downloaded on iTunes? Yeah, and actually we're on uh, noisetrade.com. You can go and pay what you want. You can download our stuff for free. It's, it's out there. Every That's album epic. And you're about to go on the road with Skid Row. We are. We're about to play Kansas City and uh, Omaha with Skid Row in the next couple of weeks. Very awesome. Well, thank you for coming. That's cool. Yeah, that's Congrats. Awesome. Yeah. Thank you for doing this, man. It, mean, it means a ton to me. We've been talking about it for weeks. Yeah. I've been going, hey, we're going to do this. We're going to do this. We met up here. Yeah, absolutely, man. Look, it's like it's like Mecca. Yeah, it's this, like this, <laughs> this whole experience is something else. Yeah. And, you know, we're all, we're all amongst, uh, like Paul says, likes to say we're among friends. Among friends, yeah. Yeah, you know, we can all relate to each other on some level. 
Yeah, absolutely. It's pretty cool. Yes, absolutely. Uh, don't forget, listen to Podcast Rock City every Wednesday night on kgfrocks.com. That's when Jody and I do Kiss Talk and Kiss Music, and we drop a new episode every Monday on iTunes. We will see you guys next week in 3, 2, 1. Peace. Oops. Well, there we go. <laughs> we have it. So I guess that's their closer. Those two guys did it. I did not do it. I, <laughs> well, didn't, I did know not it. know it was. I was supposed to say peace at that juncture. So, yeah. Well, now you know for next time, for next year. Kiss Cruise Seven. Will uh, you be on board? I don't think so. I think it's probably one and done for me. Yeah. Uh, and for us, mainly because, uh, you know, it's it's in the middle of the school year. Yeah. And, uh, it's not the best time for my wife to be taken off i mean she does get vacation days but she doesn't like to ditch the students for a whole week um, right and plus you know it's it's, it's pretty pricey sure you know, so uh it's probably one and done for me but i'm glad i did it it was definitely a good time and seeing all those people and uh, definitely was worth it so well, there you happy go. to have done it well, you're back. We'll uh, get back on our feet next week with a regular episode with another random kiss song. But for now, we'll see you later. Andy Jones, Nick Jones, Chris This is World Wide. Take a second, take a second. I'm looking for you. Wasn't that the MTV video version? Yeah. Was the Black Boys? Yeah. Yeah, that's what he said. It's not even the same amount of syllables. <laughs> it's not even, not even try. You know what has the same amount of syllables? What? Handsome black guys. <laughs> Here come them handsome black guys. That'd be good. Perfect. An anthem for your Captain Underpants. Yep. That would cause him to move out. <laughs> handsome black guys showed up. What defense is there against a, hand, a group of handsome black guys? Just smile at just them. Just relinquish your women <laughs> to the handsome black guys.